Nice to see you. Uh, my name is Graham Bowman, and I'm an ICT teacher from a school called the Sydney Stringer Academy, which is up in Coventry. And I'm an NQT. I uh, started with the school in July. And one of the first things I did when I came to this school is I said, we have to have Google Apps, Google Apps for Education. We didn't have it at the time. It took us about three weeks. It got sorted. Um, just to get a picture of who I'm speaking to here, can I just see a, a show of hands of who has got Google Apps for Education in their school? A few of you? OK. The rest of you, put your hands up if you're aware of what Google Apps is, but you haven't got it in school yet. OK, super. OK. So the topic that I'm going to talk to you about is just basically a beginner's topic. It's going to be a project that you could run with little knowledge of what Google Apps is. Really straightforward. The actual topic that you're teaching could be about anything. I'm an ICT teacher, so the topic that I did was the impact of technology. What I did is I broke down that impact of technology topic into some subtopics. So one of them, for example, was software copyright, or it could be employment. How does technology affect employment? What I did is I asked my students to get themselves into groups. Because I didn't want to put them in groups. I like to give them a choice. I let them choose their groups. And I create a form. That form then fed back to a spreadsheet. I'll go over this in more detail in a second. Students then created a presentation as a group on individual computers. And that presentation then was shared to the rest of the class in a physical presentation and also via a website or VLE. So let's break into it. A form is just, if you've not seen it before, Google Forms is absolutely fantastic. It's a way to collect data and save that into a spreadsheet. Straightforward. The most troublesome thing with forms up until Wednesday was that for me to get a list of students for them to select, um, I had to individually copy and paste all their names one by one. On Wednesday, Google very kindly introduced a new feature where you can copy and paste the list. So I've got my list in a spreadsheet, copy and paste the names, and then it produces this list here. Students in groups choose member one of the group, member two, member three, and then that feeds straight back into my spreadsheet. Once that's done, I get this spreadsheet here, and I've pre-populated the list of topics, which are down here. So once they get their groups, they're given their topic, and then I've also got some research links for them to click on. This takes about five or 10 minutes for them to find, get themselves into groups and find their topic, and off they go. Now, in those groups, they can be sitting next to each other. They could be on the other side of the room, but there's no reason why they couldn't be in a different classroom. The, the option's up to you, basically. So once they're in groups, they've got their research, they then create a presentation. Now, if you've not seen Google Apps working collaborative, collaboratively before, you really should. It's absolutely fantastic. Different people, different computers, all typing on the same document. It can get a little bit messy, so that's one of the issues you need to work around. Um, and I've got some uh, tips for how to do that in a moment. I found, because I've taught ICT before just using PowerPoint, in groups of two or three crowded around one computer, it's awkward, let's, let's face it. Um, trying to get them to collaborate with each other is difficult. It tends to be one person taking over, the other two sitting back watching what's going on. In Google presentations, in Google Slides, all students can work on the same presentation, but maybe on a separate slide. So they're all working together, but on their own sub subtopic. Means that you can keep your seating plan if that's important. Keep them in their designated seats. They don't have to speak because they can comment on the document. Comment about what should be improved, what who's working on. I'm working on this bit, which bit are you working on? All can be done by comments in text form. And also, if they don't manage to finish presentation, their work is all online. They can all carry on to work on that same document from home, and it's automatically ready for them when they come back to school the next day. So I'm going to play you a video in a second. And this is two of my students that I was working with about their experience of this short project. OK, here we go. So uh, Adelita, how have you found using Google Docs today? Um, it's been really easy because like, um, it's just like PowerPoint, but it's different because you can share different documents and do it together. Because like, if you were to do it on your own, um, you do need like, one one or two slides in about an hour, but with teamwork, you can do about three or four. So, Christo, have you enjoyed it? 
Yeah. Okay, great. What about you, Jay? Did any problems today? Um, we had a problem with other people changing the other slides and deleting other people's work, but we overcome that by assigning huh? other slides to certain people so that they could have messed with other people's work. But it, it's, it's the same as PowerPoint, so it's really easy to use, and I can share my work with other people and they can do it at home. Super. So has it helped you in your work, you think? Yeah, it's helped us as in we can, we can ask you questions and if we don't get the work, we can just leave the slide blank and you can go on and like write a tip or something to help us. Okay, great. So good thing then? Um, the good thing is it's, it's exactly the same as PowerPoint, except for we can all work on it together being in different workstations. Right, so key features there. They're all working on the same document together. I can comment on their documents. If I don't think that a particular slide is up to scratch, I can make a comment to them while they're working on it. I don't have to wait until, like, until they hand it in to me. And the simplicity of it is so amazing. I deliberately made a point of not telling my students how to use the software. I said, this is your login detail. This is how you share. Go ahead and do it. And there weren't any problems at all. They were all used to using PowerPoint and presentation software. They've used that in the past. So. Once the presentations are made, we can deliver presentations just like any other presentation software. But the advantage now with Google Docs is that we can embed these presentations into a website. It could be a Google site, it could be your own school website, or your school VLE. Um, I personally have uh, a VLE which I use in my classes, which I put them on. And um, for one of my classes, I don't use the VLE. I just created a Google site, which I'm sure if you hang around, there's plenty of information about Google sites. So easy, embed the presentations and all the students then can go away, look at the presentations, and then I set questions for them to answer about other people's presentations. So that's about collaborative learning and students collaborating to teach each other. Obviously, all the students then can see their own presentations. They can see their work being displayed to other pupils. Um, so it's rewarding for them. And pupils are learning. Rather than learning from me as their teacher, I'm just facilitating that learning. Students are actually learning from each other. So they're learning through their zones of proximal development. Can you tell I'm an NQT? So um, here's just an example of a site that I made. This took me about three minutes, copied the embed codes, and stuck it into a website. And uh, all the students can flick through the slides and see it like that, basically. Bit of development, you could take this away um, for yourselves if you get Google Apps set up. It takes a few weeks for the, to get the authorization, and then you're up and running. So it can be used, as I said, not just with IT, it could be used with history, French, maths, whatever subjects you teach. The grouping-wise, if your groups change, it's so easy to change who your presentation is shared with. You can just remove somebody, add somebody else in, and they're working on the same presentation. Pupils could then, if you like, I didn't try this, but this is an idea I had. Pupils could then go and peer assess, so they could look at other people's presentations, write comments on how they think they could then improve the presentation. Or if you um, assign more pupils, or more able pupils, sorry, to a presentation that's probably not up to scratch, you could then ask those pupils to make improvements themselves. So you're integrating higher able and less able students using differentiation. So that was peer teaching and collaboration using forms and slides. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. My Twitter is on the board here. If you want to go to my Twitter, you can download the slides if you want to have a look at the video again, if you want to have a look at the examples. I put an example here of a website that's sharing presentations. Uh, that's my Twitter. And if you've got any questions, uh, I've got a few minutes that I could take some here. Or if you'd like to come over, um, I'm quite happy to hang around for a bit if you've got any questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>